Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is December 13th, 2022. This video is called The Lake of Fire. I have only taught this topic once or twice, and to my knowledge, there's only one other man that believes what I believe concerning this. And I'll talk a little bit about him later. The lake of fire. The lake of fire is, as all doctrines, all Christian doctrines, totally misunderstood by the church. Because the church teaches eternal torment in hell, which for them is the lake of fire. They uh, teach that if you do not receive Jesus, do not believe in Jesus during this life, then you will be... Um, cast into hell when you die and you will be tormented forever in the presence of the devil and his angels. Consider what an abominable doctrine that is. What kind of God would do that? Is that the God you serve? Do you serve a God who would endlessly torment someone? Then you don't understand your God. You don't understand your Father in Heaven at all. But that's not surprising, is it? Because the church, by and large, has thrown out God's law, which is there to instruct us with respect to His ways. Did you know that the most you can be beaten is 40 stripes? 40 lashes with a whip. No more, lest a man be degraded in his own sight, is what the scripture says. Do you know it's nowhere in the law that a thief would have his hands cut off? How ridiculous is that? The man had to steal to provide for himself, and now you're going to cut off his hands so he can't work? You know, see, the ignorance of the religions, the ignorance of the those who think they are wise with respect to the ways of God is, is utterly unbelievable. <clears throat> and it's because they've not looked into the law of God. They've not looked into God's ways. You cannot sin enough to warrant eternal punishment. And to say that simply because you didn't come to faith, you deserve eternal punishment, is the epitome of blasphemy, the epitome of ridiculous thought. So what is the lake of fire? What is hell? Hell, which comes from the Greek Hades, is the place of the dead. It's the place where people, people's souls go awaiting their judgment. It's not a place of torment. Let's look at a few scriptures. <clears throat> Let's start with Luke chapter 12. Now I'm going to read a parable before I get to the main scripture I want to read here, but let's start in uh, Luke 12, verse 35. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what hour the thief was coming in, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. <clears throat> By and large, the entire church does not expect Christ right now. They think that they're going to be walking into some glory before the coming of Christ. 
No. We are there. We need to be watching. We should be watching for Christ because his coming is imminent. Peter then said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom his master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time? That's food in due season. That's doctrine. <clears throat> That's the word of God. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Are you still feeding the flock? Are you still feeding the word of God to those whom God has given you? Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. Over all his possessions. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. That's talking about false doctrine here. Begins to put on airs and, and, and make things up. You know, there's so much made up doctrine and teaching out there. <clears throat> if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. That means he's going to cast him into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that servant who knew his master's will but did not get ready or act according to his will will receive a severe beating. But the one who didn't know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given, of him much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. That's why the scripture says not many of you should be teachers because you who teach will receive a more severe judgment. Now, verse 49, after these parables, Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth and would that it were already kindled. Now, isn't that interesting? <clears throat> Did Jesus cast fire upon the earth when he came? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord? Jeremiah chapter 23. Is not my word like fire? Is not my word like a hammer that breaks in pieces? See, the word of God is like fire. Fire burns. Fire breaks your heart. The fire of God breaks your heart. So that you can begin to be like him. I came to cast fire on the earth and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I've come to give peace on earth? <clears throat> Did I come to make you feel good about yourself? Did I come to make you rich? Did I come to make you prosperous? Did I come to make you feel good? Did I come to titillate your emotions? You know, Jesus is like the genie now. Jesus is, you know, you make a wish and boom, you got it. Prosperity teaching, name it, claim it. Um, gold dust coming down from heaven, barking like dogs in the church. Craziness that has been done in the name of the Lord. And he will have none of it. Do you think that I've come to give peace on earth and do silly things like holy laughter and stuff like that? Do you think that? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on in one house there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Have you ever dared to speak the truth within your own family? No, no, we don't talk about politics or religion in my family. <clears throat> I mean, that's the way more, most families are so that they can get along. But never a word of truth is spoken, right? So no one 
implemented this, did they? Or very few. Because we are called upon to speak truth. Of course, we have to know what truth is. Remember, the spiritual man judges all things, but just because you suddenly believe in Jesus doesn't mean you're spiritual all of a sudden and that you can judge all things. No, it requires maturity. So you don't just go out blasting people once you believe in Jesus. But as you grow in the knowledge of the Lord, then you speak the truth. And we will be accountable to our Lord for what we have said and what we have not said. Okay, now let's go to Revelation chapter 19, starting with 11. Verse 11. <clears throat> Actually, this is not, uh, that was 20. I need to go back up to 19. Verse 17 of chapter 19. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and with a loud voice he called to all the birds that fly directly overhead, Come gather for the great supper of God, to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and their riders. <clears throat> and the flesh of all men, both free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. The beast, <clears throat> this is the eighth head of the beast. He fights against the lamb. The lamb, God, put it in his heart to destroy Babylon the great. The beast, though, this head of the beast serves Satan. And so he still fights against the lamb. And so now at the very end, and we're almost at this time in history, it just is not quite here yet, but it, we're very close. Verse 19 again. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth. So all the leaders of the earth, the political leaders of the earth, who follow the beast and who worship Satan, with their armies, they're gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. <clears throat> I am part of that army. I hope you're part of that army. They fight against us. And the beast was captured. And with it, the false prophet, who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. I just finished a 24-part uh, video series called The Mark of the Beast. I encourage you to watch all of that. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. They were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. What is that lake of fire? And the rest were slain by the sword that came from the mouth of him who was sitting on the horse. And all the birds were gorged with their flesh. The sword that comes from the mouth of the one on the horse is the word of God. There is no literal sword out of Jesus' mouth. It is the sword of the Spirit. It is the word of God. And the way that people are slain with that is by repenting and following Christ. Then I'm going to go down to Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. This is after the, the millennium, after the thousand years. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. From his presence earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book... So this would, be, this would be the second resurrection because those who are part of the first resurrection will be those who rule and reign with Christ during the millennium. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books 
according to what they had done. <clears throat> and the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades, or death and hell, were thrown into the lake of fire. So the church teaches that you will burn eternally in hell, but yet hell is thrown into the lake of fire. So what does that mean? This is the second death, the lake of fire. The second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, life, the book of the soul, he was thrown into the lake of fire. If anyone's name was not found written. So this is where the, the church gets its doctrine that if you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to be thrown into hell forever. But it's not hell, is it? It's the lake of fire. <clears throat> and then in verse 14, just before that, it says, this is the second death, the lake of fire. The first death was the death of our spirits. When we received the Spirit of God, when we believed in Jesus, our spirits were quickened because we, we received the Word, and so we were begotten of God at that point. We receive that earnest of the Spirit, and so that first death is taken care of because then our spirit is quickened back to life. We are transferred from the domain of darkness into the domain of light. <clears throat> the second death is the death of the soul. The soul is what we consider to be me, me, myself, and mine. The soul is what defines us, our mind, our will, our emotions. With our soul we decide, with our soul we feel, with our soul we determine to do or not to do. Jesus said, and he taught, that we have to lose our life, our soul, in this present experience in order to gain our souls eternally. What that means is that we are to submit to, the, to Christ and to his teachings now. Submitting our soul to him. Submitting our soul to truth rather than going our own way. <clears throat> if we just go our own way, if we, you know, just get involved with the world, then we will lose our soul. That is, if, if we remain in Babylon the Great and never come out of her, we lose, we will lose our soul into the second death because we did not die now. See, we could die now. And so we experience the second death now during this lifetime. But if we refuse to do that, then we have to go through the second death. Now, what was this? If we went through the second death now, if we go through, go through it now. I'm going through it now. Are you going through it now? If we go through it now, <clears throat> that means we allow the Word of God to apply to us now. We allow the fire of God to burn us now, to purge us now, to cleanse us now. If we don't do that now, we have to go through the second death. We have to go through the lake of fire. 
So does that mean eternal torment? Let's go to Revelation 21. <clears throat> then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. That's New Jerusalem. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who overcomes will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. The one who overcomes, the one who allows the fire of God to burn in his life during this life. That is the overcomer. The one who allowed the word of God to come in to him and then to produce fruit in him. To burn out the dross, the evil, the sin in his life. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So anyone, <clears throat> anyone who did not allow the word of God to change them from the inside out, who remained cowardly, who remained faithless, who remained detestable, who remained a murderer, who remained sexually immoral, who remained a sorcerer, who remained an idolater, who remained a liar. And this does not list every sin, but this lets you know many of the sins that will keep you out, out of New Jerusalem. Their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So this lake of fire is the second death death. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Behold, I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. Now this was, of course, John the Baptist when Jesus first came. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. See, Jesus and his first coming came to the temple over in old Jerusalem. The Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The second coming of Christ, he comes to his living temple. That's me. Okay? This, the Lord will suddenly come to his temple. He will suddenly come fully into the overcomers. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says I am of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? When the Lord comes in fullness, who can stand? For he is like a refiner's fire. What? He is like a fire? He is like a refiner's fire. And fuller soap, you know, that burns, right? He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings and righteous to I am. <clears throat> so, the Lord will suddenly come to his temple. 
The second coming is not going to look like you think. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2. In that day, the branch of I am will be beautiful and glorious. Now, one of the videos that I did in this Mark of the Beast series talked about the branch of God. In that day, I think it was number 22. In that day, the branch of I am shall be beautiful and glorious. And the fruit of the land shall be the pride and honor of the survivors of Israel. And he who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy. Everyone who has been recorded for life in Jerusalem, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and cleansed the bloodstains of Jerusalem from its midst by a spirit of judgment and by a spirit of burning. Then the Lord, then I am, will create over the whole side of Mount Zion and over her assemblies a cloud by day and smoke and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For over all the glory there will be a canopy. There will be a booth for shade by day from the heat and for a refuge and a shelter from the storm and the rain. This is talking about what happens with natural people who are left alive when the branch is revealed. The branch of the Lord refers to the overcomers. So when the overcomers are glorified, that's when the filth of the daughters of Zion will be cleansed. Then we're going to go to Isaiah 33. Verse 10, now I will arise, says I am. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. You conceive chaff, you give birth to stubble. Your breath is a fire that will consume you. And the peoples will be as if burned to lime, like thorns cut down that are burned in the fire. Hear you who are far off what I have done. And you who are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling has seized the godless. If you're still sinning and calling yourself a Christian, or if you're still sinning and you don't call yourself a Christian, be afraid. Verse 14, who among us can dwell with a consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with everlasting burnings? Who? Who can dwell with consuming fire? I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to read another scripture first before I do. This is Hebrews chapter 12 starting at verse 18. For you, you believers, you Christians, have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, new Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, new Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. This is the overcomers. The assembly of the firstborn are the overcomers. That word is ecclesia. It's the church of the firstborn. They are the first fruits, the first who will ever be glorified. They are the man child of Revelation chapter 12. They are the ones who will feed the woman, the bride who is not yet ready. And more than that. You have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, 
and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word even than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. Here's another one of the warnings in Hebrews. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. That's what's happening now. Everything is being shaken. The world is being shaken. Babylon the Great is falling. His people have been shaken. The overcomers have been shaken. This whole last year and more for me and my wife was a shaking. We were shaken to our core. Thought we were going to die numerous times. And we're ready to give it, gave ourselves to the Lord, commended our spirits to God. But here we are. We did not die. We're still alive and are left. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. See, that's what's remaining in me, the things that cannot be shaken. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. So back then to Isaiah 33. Who among us can dwell with a consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with everlasting burnings? Who? What's the answer? The overcomer. The overcomer is the only one that can dwell with the consuming fire. And it, he answers it in verse 15. He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, who despises the gain of oppression, who shakes his hands lest they hold a bribe, who stops his ears from even hearing of bloodshed, who shuts his eyes from looking upon evil, He will dwell on the heights. His place of defense will be the fortresses of rocks. His bread will be given him. His water will be sure. The overcomer, you see, is being made, being conformed into the very image of God into the very image of the consuming fire, into the very image of Christ who died for him. That's the overcomer, being made into the image of God. Read 1 John chapter 2, verse 28 to chapter 3, verse 3. So then, what is the lake of fire? Now I'm going to read you a couple of visions given by given to Kenneth Fisher and he will answer that question and he's the only other one I know besides my wife who believes this. Vision one. <clears throat> I beheld then the tempest and waves and great heat of the lake that burned with fire and brimstone. And within the lake, submerged in its rolling tempest were the souls of the damned. These had received the lake of fire as a lake of deliverance. A lake which was but the means the Lord uses to rid their lives of that which causes them to be separate from their creator. This lake in its fire and heat would remove the bonds which came from partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
I saw then the individual overcomers in glorified bodies, walking in the air above the flames of the lake, each overcomer around two feet or so above the seething mass below them. The overcomers in their eternal bodies would bend over at the waist or kneel with one knee down, and they would reach down with their arms through the flames into the hearts of the damned. They would grasp the iniquity in their hearts, and like long strings of tar, they would pull this iniquity out of their hearts, thus cleansing them of personal iniquity. Now this is a parable, of course. This is a picture. How do the overcomers actually do this? We'll see. As the iniquity was drawn out by the glorified hands of the overcomers, the flames of the lake would consume the tar strands and would burn them up so that they did not exist. Each and every soul in this lake longed for the flames of the lake to consume them, to deliver them, and each one was truly delivered. This is but one of the tasks assigned to the overcomers once they are glorified. They will deliver the damned from the fall of Adam and will remove from them the curse of personal sin, personal self-will. These who are overcomers are very few in number, but they bear the full weight of the authority of the Ancient of Days. <clears throat> they, with his full power and unlimited spirit, will do this work, restoring all things back unto the Lord and the kingdom of the Lord. I saw that each overcomer is unique, a creation of the Lord, each made new as they are, as persons. The ability they had to walk above the lake was the same ability they had to walk amongst the nations, and also to be seated with the Ancient of Days upon his throne, forever ruling and reigning. The glorified overcomer had the ability to appear in all of these places at the very same time. There was no restriction as to them appearing over the lake of fire, or on the earth amongst the nations, teaching them, or upon the throne ruling and reigning. They had become omnipotent and omniscient, just as is the Ancient of Days. Second vision. <clears throat> then I was taken close to the flames, wherein the souls of the damned were being consumed. Brought up close to the intense heat of this fire, I saw the flames as though they were individual little wisps of fire, each one a brand or a staff of flame separate from one another but together in a mass so that the flames were melded in such a manner as to form the lake that burned with fire and brimstone. I saw that these individual flames, each one separately, was the soul in perfection of an overcomer. Each one was an overcomer who through their life had endured the same fire in the form of trials and tests and in the form of the long time in which they endured it. But these who had partaken first of the fire while they yet lived in their mortal bodies, were now made into flames of fire by the Ancient of Days. <coughs> the very same consuming fire that is the Ancient of Days was also them, but in a smaller size, so that there was no differentiating from the fire that was the Ancient of Days and the fires of those who had overcome and who had earned the right to be made into these flaming brands of fire. These overcomers formed this lake of fire and as a conglomerate mass, they executed the necessary judgment upon the ungodly and released them from their debts. The ungodly then died a second time to that which bound them, even the death found because of the curse of Adam's fall. Death died within the consuming power of these individual flames. So holy were these individual flames that anything untoward or ungodly or wicked that was in the nature of a soul in this chamber of death had no chance of survival. That which was ungodly died. That which was unholy died. That which was wicked died. Nothing was left of the fallen nature of a soul which these flames did consume as they caused death upon humanity to die. When I saw this, then I understood that the overcomers, first partaking of the trials of their own personal cross and of the baptism of Pentecost fire, must then 
be converted and change themselves into these individual flames, a change which happens when they finally come to tabernacle, to live with the Ancient of Days forever. So it is with the same authority and power of the Ancient of Days. These came to kill death, causing death to die and to set all souls free. <clears throat> so, what is the lake of fire? 